when I first started teaching, um, there was a moment, and I can remember it vividly, um, there was a young man, um, his name was David, and um, David committed suicide. And I had never been through a student death before. I was probably in my early 20s. Um, I had, at that time, not had any friends that had committed suicide. One of the things then, I think, that was a theme for me as I have gone through in different roles in education is been um, listening for kids and how they speak and and thinking about what am I noticing about a change and how do I how do I pick up on those changes. I think kids struggle, young people struggle with identifying or um, articulating when they're struggling just because they don't know they shouldn't feel that way. Quite frankly, I, I think young people don't know that it's not as natural to be as sad or as to think as harmful thoughts to themselves. Um, I'm not sure at what point kids or young people begin to, uh, in their brain, say, I wonder if the world would be better without me. I think some families don't talk about it because they don't want to. Um, I think that's a number of uh, families is that they don't want to talk about it. And so as a result of not wanting to talk about it, they don't. And so then it doesn't get fixed. You need to begin to ask questions and then listen. And so when your child is not telling you something, that's telling you something. When you ask questions and they, they shut you down because they will, then you have to figure out when is the time to ask those conversations. You have to be able to say to, a, say to your child, I see you, I see you're in pain. I know you'll tell me sometime when you're ready, but I want you to know I'm ready whenever you're ready to talk to me.